Hello everyone, it's another day and another router. This time, it is an EE broadband router. Uh, I think it's just a standard ADSL one, I actually don't know. I haven't bothered looking it up yet. And uh, the stickers on it don't really give much away in the name of model numbers or anything. So they say it's model name, Bright Box Wireless Router. And then made by Arcadian who I think also make possibly some cable modems that uh, I think a lot of American cable providers use and possibly uh, some of the Virgin Media ones in the UK might be made by Arcadian. It has MAC address, serial number, wireless name and a unique admin password for the router so that's quite good. They didn't just use change me or something like that. And on the front you've got the power light, the internet light, that's possibly the ADSL light or the DSL light I think, Wi-Fi light, that might be or is probably WPS light, and then Ethernet 1, 2, 3 and 4. On the left side absolutely nothing, on the right side also nothing. Um, if you've got it out of the box, a sticker which says once we uh, plug me in once you've told your broadband's ready, and then the help desk address. I'm going to take off that sticker because whoever had it originally obviously didn't. And yeah, quite nice looking actually compared to a lot of routers. So nothing else except for on the back where you've got the DSL port, so that's the RJ11 connection going off to your phone line, factory reset hole which you'll need to use a paper clip or some other long pin to get to, just using a, a biro is unlikely to reach that, it looks like it's quite well recessed. Uh, you've got Ethernet 1, 2, 3 and 4. It also looks like number 4 could be used for VDSL uh, or fibre to the cabinet or otherwise known as like the infinity style connections. Uh, if you have a an open reach modem to go with it. A USB socket, not sure what that's for, possibly it supports printing uh, and almost certainly does support uh, file sharing. If you plugged in a USB drive in a minute, possibly tacked onto the end of this video or if you look in the description of the video I might have another one which I've made about the web interface of this thing. I also will probably take it to bits as well. It's actually missing one of the, uh, the feet there, so I expect there's four screws around there. In fact, before I do the video about the web interface, I'll take it to bits in this video. Then, like I thought, that icon there is the WPS button, and you've got WPS there. The power pack it comes with just looks like a standard 12 volt, one amp power pack and lets you swap out, in fact it almost looks like this power pack's not from this router because this looks very similar to the Thompson Technicolor ones, uh, but yeah you can swap out the plug so they produce just one of these for all the regions and then they give you a UK plug or a US plug or wherever it ends up being shipped to. So let's plug it in and see what the lights do, bearing in mind it's not plugged into any uh, DSL service or anything like that. And other than the wireless light, I don't expect anything else will do anything. taking a very long time though. Or possibly wireless is switched off on this. I oh, know there we go, just took absolutely forever to come on. So that's probably the, the most that this will do because it's not plugged into the DSL and it's not plugged into the DSL so it then can't get the internet. It's not plugged into any Ethernet. 
Let's take this thing to bits. Torque screwdrivers, not standard Phillips. So, I'll take my pick of which size it might be. Probably that size. It also looks like it might be Torx with a uh, security bit in the middle. However, the security bit doesn't poke up high enough to prevent a fairly bad fitting of a normal non-security bit Torx. Uh, this one is a Torx 9 or a T9 which seems to fit. Right, I have just noticed this has only 100 megabit Ethernet. If you look down into the connections here, you've only got four gold connections. So that will be the send and the receive only for 100 megabit network. To do gigabit, you need all of the, uh, the pins, so you'd need an extra four pins to make it gigabit. So if you do have one of these and you're copying stuff between computers over the Ethernet, you will only get a maximum of 100 megabit. So that's the screws undone, unless there's one hiding under the label, which it doesn't feel like there is. Doesn't seem to want to come undone without much of a fuss, so there we go. Right, plastic underside. Then we have a little aerial hanging around at the left side. Metal template aerial. And another aerial at the front. At the front, yep, that's where the LEDs are at the front there. Looks like it's been incredibly badly soldered on, but it doesn't really need to be pretty inside that box, so it doesn't really matter. We've got presumably the processor underneath there. Wind bond, where there might be some memory, maybe. A Broadcom chip there, which is either the, well, could be the DSL or could be the Wi-Fi. And then only a few surface mount components on the other side. And that's about it. Yeah, that does seem to be about it. There's a missing button here, which I don't know what that could be. Maybe uh, the WPS button at the back? Possibly. Looks like it might be the same. Uh, could also be at the front there. Wondering what else you could have as a useful button on the front of these routers, but nothing springs to mind. standard router. So it's not been one of my most exciting videos but if it's been interesting to you or helpful it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing. You don't need to have the alert switched on because I don't really mind about that but uh, it would be very helpful to have subscriber numbers on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.